Today's video is made possible by our friends at Simply Safe. About a hundred years ago, a half a dozen or so families in the area went upstream of the main river here in the valley and started digging two irrigation ditches so that they could redirect water down from the glacier fed mountain streams to irrigate the pastures in this valley. We happened to be on a piece of land that was at the very tail end of one of these ditches and I'm just now kind of getting my head around it with the help of my neighbor who actually did a lot of this work back in the day. He's uh, fourth, fifth generation in this area. I'm at a point now where I think I can kind of explain to you how the irrigation system works and how interesting and how unique that is to, there are very few places in the world where you could have a system like this. It's gonna need some pretty extensive rebuilding, the head gates and such, um, and that's kind of where I'm getting started today. So I wanna give, uh, I'm doing a survey, a kind of a material list of what I'm going to need, but I'll explain to you how the irrigation system work, works and how by just changing gates, we can irrigate, flood irrigate our entire acreage and never have to pay for water or pumps or electricity. For us, it all starts right here. This ditch right here, now just for your own reference, the water running in this right now is about 10% of what it would normally run. The other folks upstream are irrigating. There's only so many shares of water rights in the valley and we happen to have a percentage but we also happen to be at the very tail end of it. So we are, uh, I guess whatever comes to us, we're able to use until it goes back into the river. But it starts right here. So my neighbor is irrigating right now, so the water flow is really low, but this is essentially the head gate, one of three that I have on the property that are gonna need to be rebuilt. So what this is, is a way to redirect the water uh, by a series of these gates. You're gonna see that this stuff is in pretty bad repair. It's going to be need to be rebuilt, um, but not entirely. A lot of the stuff I'll be able to kind of repair uh, without doing a full rebuild uh, until I kind of know what I want. But what you essentially do when I want to redirect water onto my land or into this particular ditch, I take these gates and drop them in and it essentially backs up the water, redirects it out here. Now here's the interesting part. With the gate reinstalled right here, the water is redirected out this way and now feeding this ditch here, which I just got cleared out and I'm getting ready to put gates in here as, as well. So here's the cool part. So my neighbor, he told me all about it, uh, how they, what did they, what did, I even wrote it down, I forget what they, what they called it, but they've graded this land and, and, the, and these into, um, there's just rows, like you would plant corn and the rows all run across there. And when this backs up against these gates over here, this whole property uh, will flood. It will actually go across there, and I've, I've practiced with it, you know, the upper one there, overnight, and the whole upper pasture uh, was all under two or three inches of water. This is the gate I just showed you. That's where the inlet comes. Now we have a second substantial head gate right here. Uh, problem is, is that all the wood and everything is rotting, and these uh, sliders here, these rails, these two buys, you know, there's nothing left to really hook on to uh, the lumber on these two by sixes and such are all rotted. He's got pressure treat here on the corners, which is fine, but you know, I, I'm starting to think that pressure treated lumber is a scam <laughs> because I know what they use. They use the cheapest, worst garbage in the world to pressure treat it for ground contact. And I, you know, I don't know, I mean, just from my experience, I don't have any science here, but I almost think sometimes that it doesn't last any longer than a regular two by four would. One problem that we need to address that the guys always run into is there's so much water that moves through these, these gates and these ditches when it's running at capacity that uh, as it comes through the gate, you get some sort of some strange hydraulics, some water movement that starts to undermine the gate itself. So you'll see he's got a long runoff here at the end of it and even has poured like 90 pounds of concrete right there at the end to stop that from undermining. First gate's up there at the quad, second gate right there in the middle. And then you can see here, of course, is the third. And this is the one that's in the worst shape of probably where we'll start. So I'm gonna start by replacing all the rotten boards and such. 
and you can see that the gates themselves are all kind of they're getting pretty rough and falling apart they're not really sealed holding water anymore once the field is watered or we're taking all that we want the overflow or excess water goes through here to this culvert which cuts across and goes into the main ditch which parallels the road now this is what i had to or this is a portion of what i had to dig out with the excavator you can see that that is probably goodness that's got to be 3,000 feet of ditch. I was two and a half days digging on it. Simply Safe is an incredibly reliable security system that you can install yourself. Simply order online or over the phone. They'll deliver it directly to your house. In most cases, you can have it installed in an hour or two. And from there, you enjoy 24 7 professional monitoring for any emergency that might come about. Simply Safe on. Home. The Simply Safe security system is incredibly modular. They have all sorts of sensors, so you can custom tailor the, the system to fit your application, whether that be wireless video cameras, freeze detectors, glass breaking sensors, or just simple door chimes. Our friends at Simply Safe get tickled when I share personal stories of why I like my system. One of the things that I've enjoyed with the two systems that I've installed was the ease of installation. If you don't have a lot of tools or you're not a professional homeowner, don't be afraid anyone can install this system. It's very intuitive. It's very simple to set up. They put a lot of thought into just the interface to make it as simple and as easy, and po as, easy as possible. If you're interested in protecting your own home with a Simply Safe security system, go to simplysafe.com forward slash Wrangler Star. Right here is about the midway point on the main irrigation ditch and this crosses our driveway. So a culvert was put in so that it runs over here. Here we are at the end. The water will eventually gravity feed all the way to this point following all those grooves and dumping right back into the river. I mean, when you think about the amount of effort that went into building the infrastructure, uh, b digging that ditch, now this is way back before, this is steam engine times, right? This is way back before there were excavators that you could go and rent and do this so easily like I did. This all, I can't even imagine the effort that must have went into it to redirect a river uh, and to run it through all of the agricultural fields and the dairies and such. Uh, it's a brilliant and simple system that's worked for a hundred years that is an incredible thing to have on your property. I. Uh, didn't really understand it when we moved in. I knew we had water rights and I knew there was something about an irrigation ditch, but I didn't com comprehend of, of what a, an incredible uh, asset that is uh, for a homestead. Let me show you something that we're working on with the um, local conservation district that uh, is going to be an upcoming project that's kind of, uh, kind of interesting as well. Right here, we're at the east end of our property. Actually, it's not the east end. This is a separate lot. Mrs. W and I bought the lot next to us of our, of our place so that we have something for our kids in the future or who, who knows what options. But it's a buildable lot independent of our, our main place. A few years ago there was a big flood and the thing with, with river hydraulics is really interesting. If you do something upstream at a rock, at a boulder, at a dike, a dam, a, a weir, it changes things downstream is what I'm starting to lear learning. And so something happened up, upstream that changed the dynamics of the river where right here at this bend, it's starting to undermine the, the bank. You can see right here, this is actually overhanging and about to fall off. As the water comes in, it's undermining this and, and we're basically losing land, right? It's getting, getting smaller and smaller. So this needs to be addressed. Back in the day, you know, you'd have some dump trucks come in here, bring about 50 loads of big boulders, and you'd pack this all in here and, and problem solved, right? Now we live in a different time, and those of you who don't live out west, you don't realize that fish-bearing streams in the Pacific Northwest are, I'll, I'll go so far as to say they're, they're sacred. You do not mess with them. You don't alter them, you don't change them, even if it runs through your land, it's not yours to do with as you wish. Because as I said, what we do up here can affect folks downstream and cause them to have a problem, right? So looking at this, I thought, well, what do I do? And I can't just go rent an excavator and fix it. I could do that, but I don't, legally, I would be in trouble. And, and I, plus, I just don't have the knowledge and understanding, to be honest with you. I don't know how that's going to affect my neighbors as well. So. I got in touch with the local conservation district and they sent one of their uh, specialists out 
uh, and they're going to hopefully they may have some funding. They're going to bring a hydrologist that specializes this and work with us on this. There may be some grants that we can apply for where they can offset the cost and we can do this properly under, you know, with the supervision of folks that are actually know what they're doing and not do something that's going to harm someone else downstream. So this week I'm going to be start documenting this. I'm going to put a series of stakes at the three or four worst areas with 10, 20 and 30 foot setbacks and we'll monitor this and get a record of how quickly this is eroding and how critical this is. If we can make a good case when we go to write a, for, try to go for a grant to, to do this repair, if we have some documentation that can show that we have you know, some active erosion going on here, we might have a better chance of having someone that can help us out with this. So just something that we thought would be kind of interesting to look at that uh, we're working on right now. I wasn't gonna do any videos on it. I was just gonna take a couple weeks off and kind of just put my head down and get done what needed to be done. But I got a bunch of private messages and DMs of asking for updates on the irrigation system and there seemed to be a lot of interest in it. And I think it's interesting, very interesting as well, very unique. Uh, system. So I'm going to get the measurements for the wood. We'll get the sawmill fired up tomorrow. We'll start cutting all those four by fours, those two by sixes, and get those gates fortified and functioning properly. I think it's going to be pretty interesting when you see it flood for the first time. It's, it's really, really cool. And I'll share that with you. Maybe we can even get some drone footage and watch all that. But for right now, I got to uh, head into town. Um, those of you who follow my Instagram page will see that we have a new suspension. King coilovers going on the super, the new Super Duty, and it's supposed to be done. And we're gonna, Mrs. W and I are gonna head in and pick it up from our uh, awesome suspension guy up in town, and uh, we get to see it for the first time. So I'll share a video with that and my experience of what it's like to go from factory suspension to top tier tier one King coilovers. Uh, and see what the difference, see what that hype's all about. But I've told it's, it, I've told it's been, it's pretty amazing, pretty miraculous, the difference. But uh, that'll come up. I'll do a little extra video for that. Thanks for watching. May God bless you guys. Please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you guys on the next video. <laughs> Whoa. Nicely done. An awkward situation. <laughs> We're the first bikes up here today, huh? Yeah. <laughs> anything up here. Is that a canteen? That's a mine. I don't think it's a mine. I think it looks more like a cook pot. Easy. No, you made it look easy. You beat me to the top. Oh, my bike work has a bit far. Finally starting to outclass my old man. Wait, wait, wait. It ought to be. The day's not over though. Not for that, not for that, no you didn't. Jack and I are starting our conditioning for the summit attempt. Are you about ready? Oh. We're going up there this year. It's a good method, Jack. Are you refreshed? 